Adam Freeman Pask is a champion athlete. He has represented Great Britain in the Olympics. And he's won many medals. He's a very famous athlete. And he's come to talk to us about what it takes to be a champion, about what it takes to put in the effort and uh, uh, you know, do great things for your country. Businesses basically, so companies like Microsoft, big car companies, um, and like a, a branch of Fiat, Fiat and um, uh, so the Alfa Romeo group has come down and worked with quite a lot in the UK. And so the, the name of this sort of talk is uh, about bringing your A game, right? So in sport, you've got to perform. So I try and talk about the areas of sport and how we perform, and then I try and cross it over so we can talk about how you perform when you're doing your day-to-day -day business in the office, basically. So as you can see, rowing is a, a beautiful sport, but it's also a very, very tough physical sport as well. So you've got beauty, but you've also got the hard work. Um, so it's nice to show you a bit of what the beautiful bit looks like, but now I'm going to talk a bit more about the, uh, the hard work involved. When I was thinking about performance and how I've done well on teams, when we've won World Cup medals, when we've been at the Olympics, it all boils down to how we maintain our performance under pressure, basically. So I've sort of broken this into the areas that help us train and perform. So these are the eight areas that I'm going to cover. So we've got chasing the dream, you know, that idea in your head of what you want to do, that goal, that vision, you know, that success, um, the talent required, the strategy, the leadership required, the teamwork, the determination, the learning required, and the self-belief to achieve it, right? So I'm just going to touch on these areas. Please ask any questions as I'm going through. If I'm talking too fast, if you want to explain, if you want me to explain in another, another way. But these, these areas are really good crossovers for success in business as well. So the first area is, um, is defining the goal. Uh, so for me, in my experience, my experience was um, I was on the national team, on the British rowing team, and the Olympics was coming to my hometown, basically. This, uh, this lake here, this is me rowing in front of all the crowds in front of these big TV screens. This was maybe 500 meters from where I live in Windsor. So a once in a lifetime opportunity was coming to my front doorstep to be at the Olympics. The only, you know, we're never gonna have another British Olympics. So once in a lifetime, I had to make sure I made that team. That was my goal, that was my vision. That was my dream, basically. So a little bit of a sort of mantra I use was without desire, there is no fire. So you need to have that goal, that real urge to do it. And um, to make it a meaningful goal is something you absolutely have to fulfill. So if you need to get like a report done on time, you've got to make it in your mindset that that has to be done by the end of the week. It's not something you can leave till next week, you know. That's otherwise a goal won't stick. It will just become something you just, you know, park to one side, right? So whatever it is, you've got to make sure that goal has an absolute certainty to it. You know, you've got to focus on what, what's going to be the outcome. So going to, you know, that's my outcome. You know, if you're doing, if you're running a business, you need to have that that drive to make it succeed, right? Because you know that that changes things, doesn't it? If, you, if your business is successful, your lifestyles change, your your you know your career accelerates. You know, every you know that's what happens, right? And that's locking onto that goal and making sure you do the work beforehand is what, what I'm talking about here, basically. So, talent. I mean, you need talent to succeed. Okay, so I think. The key to this is you wouldn't be in here if you didn't have it, right? You're talented people anyway. Um, and that's the same with like, the top end of the British rowing team, is we're, we're talented people anyway, so we've selected. So how is that relevant to business? Well, I guess when you're recruiting, so I'm not sure if you've got HR team in here, you've got HR managers, yeah. yeah? So obviously when you're recruiting, you're always looking for those people that are going to, the, the skills your business requires, right? So I'm just talking about this in terms of rowing here. So within our rowing talent identification program, so I slow my speech down, I realize I'm talking quite quick. So within, so within rowing, we have a talent identification program. And with that, we look for people who are tall, thinking about what does your business require? What do you need? Do you need accountants? Do you need uh, presenters? Do you need sales force? You know, and then you, you, you get the cream of the crop because you need the talent within your business, basically, if you want to succeed. Um, so talent, that's a key thing. So focus on the process of what makes us row fast. So again, that can relate to, to the business area in terms of what do you need to do to make your business perform better in terms of 
you know, what are you offering? If you're offering um, finance to truck drivers, how do you do that process better? Can you, can you relay the money quicker to them? Can you give them better options? Can you give them better package, uh, repayment packages? You know, it's just giving them, you know, doing your job better, right? Just finding it simply being very streamlined with it. And with rowing, obviously, our job was to row fast and to win, right? So we have to do the stuff that makes that work better. So what were we doing? Well, we were working on our technique. So we practice that rowing stroke. So in to the water, push through, release. Uh, we work on our strength and power because obviously if we're stronger, more powerful, we can pull harder, right? And aerobic fitness. So if we're fitter, we can we can do more of the more of the strokes basically. And then, so that's the basic idea of what's our strategy. You have overall goals for that week and you have guidance on how hard to work on each bit. So this was set by our coach, but then we'd also do that individually. So obviously your leader will tell you what to do, but then you need to take your responsibility to manage your own time as well, right? I mean, that's, just, you know, if you're gonna do well in business, you need to do that, right? The pace of our race. So um, I relate this to sort of, you know, with sales, I guess you need to design your, um, structure for the year so going through q1 q2 q3 q4 so you need to work out to uh, generate enough revenue for the business right so exactly the same thing so for this is me having to pull really hard and this is you having to sell really hard right same same objectives right so it's strategy to so same with your delivery of your pitches and your sales you know not having to give away too many discounts to get that sale right so you keep the profit margin high same thing with our speed when we're rowing, basically. Um, leadership is the next area. So obviously within your teams, you need to be very clear on, so we talked about our strategy and we've told, talked about our goals. So obviously you need to relay those to your workforce. So I'm gonna talk about this in terms of within the rowing boat, right? So, uh, the key thing is calling the shots, I describe this as. So for me, I relate this to when I was in the boat. So this is me here, and I was sitting at bow. So I sit at the front of the boat, and this is us winning a nice race in uh, Chongju in South Korea. So being in the front of the boat is our responsibility for leading the crew, for telling people what to do, when. And I like to summarize that in the phrase, we don't go now, we're not going to win, basically. Because a lot of the time in the boat, I'd be seeing where we, how we were doing, and I'd be like, right, we need to do this now, otherwise we're gonna get beaten. And it was very, very urgent, and the, the tone of my voice would tell the rest of my crew that we really needed to uh, push on, otherwise that was, that was it, game over. So, yeah, this is a key area for you guys, obviously, because you are in charge of other people, right? And you need to motivate them and make them do things when you need them to, right? So, this is again our structure, a little bit of our structure within rowing. So obviously we have a chef de mission, so he runs Team GB when we go to the Olympics. He obviously tells the team director of the rowing that we need medals, right? Yeah, so it goes down the chain of command. Team director speaks to the head coach and he says, you know, we need to win, we need to win six medals here, so you need to better coach these guys really well. And then head coach relays the crew coach and he says to us, you need to train really hard because your boat needs to win a medal because we need to win six medals at the Olympics or whatever. And so you see how it obviously goes down the chain. Very similar with your business. You know, you need to perform. You need to you need to sell a certain amount of um, of insurance policies. So you see how it works. It's simple. Same thing with a sport, right? Um, yeah. And obviously here, when you do your job right, it all relays back up again. You know, and then obviously that person who's done. The, the job well done at this end gets rewarded with success for the business, i.e. us winning, um, and success for the team, basically. So this is about getting the best from each other. Uh, and I think it's shown in rowing more than any other sport, but the crew, can, it can be greater than some of its parts. So basically you can get a group of individuals who you know might be okay at rowing, and then they come together and they work really well as a team. So one person might be really confident, one person might be shy, one person might be really strong, one person might be really um, you know, aggressive, right? And together, they get the best out of it, all of each other, right? So they help, you know, the quiet guys made a bit more vocal, the aggressive guys calm down, 
a strong guy can be in unison with the crew is really important. So this, this is a video from Italy, from northern Italy, Varese this is, Lake Varese near Milan. This is where we'd go and train really hard. So we'd be there for four or five weeks and we would just row together as a crew, get really, really slick. And the teamwork would become so linked that you know we just knew how each other operated. So you get that out of the way, that's the storm bit. But then it's really important that after once you've got it off your chest, that helps everyone to reform basically because you've you're not you're not holding on to that aggression anymore. You're not saying oh this and it reaches the next level of what it's possible of doing, right? So it's very normal for that to go through a cycle in business, in cycles of business or in rowing. And that determination has got to be there to keep pushing yourself to get your stuff done when you don't want to do it, right? Because once you've done it, it's done and it's out of the way, right? So determination is a big factor in sport and in business. Getting through the bits you don't want to be there for, right? Um, so, obviously you may, everyone makes mistakes, you learn from it and you do better from that, right? The problem is, on the government money representing Great Britain, we couldn't make a mistake on an international platform. We can't lose to Germany, France, Switzerland, New Zealand, Australia, India, USA, you know, we're not allowed to lose to these countries when we race them, so we need to make sure we made our mistakes behind closed doors, if that makes sense. So we did a lot of practice and race simulations, right? So you can get this situation where they're in any area because we're human beings, right? We can't control everything that goes on in our heads and what happens to you, but you can control your breathing rhythm and that can help you control what you do next. So that was a big thing for us, performing internationally, at the Olympics, under, under extreme pressure, breathing rhythm was very good. Other areas that can again help with coping under pressure, practice and rehearsal, being familiar with what you're saying, being familiar with the style, being familiar with what you're wearing, being familiar with your company and what it does, you know, that obviously gives you a sense of relaxation because you know what you're talking about, right? This is your area, you know, that can help you relax. Rehearsal, obviously, that's practicing what you're going to say. And then relaxation, so you might have your own relaxation techniques. You know, you might, uh, you might meditate, you might read a book, you might listen to music. And all these other areas, you might drink certain foods. And this helps you settle down as well. He sacrificed his previous job. He was down in the job market. He had a problem in the family. He lost his child and then he came to us, when he came he didn't have a job. Then I found he is a guy who left the fire, he, is, he knows the job, he knows the market, he did truck finance earlier, but now he has gone through the dump, now he is going to rise. Kamal initially took about 3-4 months to start off to our expectation. Then we gave him some advice, quote unquote a threat. But the cover took it in the right spirit. He started working very hard. Whatever little problem he had in his house, he solved it. He went for a small pilgrimage. He went, bought a water filter for his house, for which he was getting delayed to attending to his work. He settled that issue. Home front settled. Now he is doing a business of about, but much more than what we expect from him in the, in the initial stages. Hats off to Kamal and his dedication. So we have a small, small gift for Kamal. Give this, this here. You can. Kamal, you can take a picture. Yeah, yeah. Kamal. Well, you deserve this very much. This is He's put it like this so everyone can see in the photograph.